Hello, everybody. Welcome to the art stream. Today I am going to be working on another comic page. This is Age of Night, chapter 23, page 7. Uh, this is the one I was penciling last week, as you can see. It is all penciled now. And now I'm going to start inking. So... First thing we have to do, well, the first thing I like to do to get it out of the way is to do some of the stuff that involves tools. So right now I'm gonna go through and get some of my straight edge work done. If I can get my pen nib to cooperate, there we go. I try to do just about all the ones going in the same direction at the same time as I can, because I wanna do this in as few passes as possible because it takes a while for the ink to dry and I can't use any tools on a section that I just did while the ink is drying because then I will smear all through them, all through the wet ink and make a mess, which I do not want to do, which will probably happen at some point while I'm streaming because that's just how life works. Whoops, <laughs> did not mean to draw through that line. It's a uh, general rule of thumb when it comes to inking. You should not ever be putting your pen somewhere where you can't see where it's going. That's exactly why. Because then you accidentally ink straight through something you don't mean to. I'm kind of rocking the pen while I do this area because it's a straight-ish line, but it's water. So I want it to still follow the line that it's supposed to, but it doesn't have to be like razor straight. Over in this corner. Get these. I just heard some weird thumping outside. I don't know what that was. It's a very snowy, windy day here. School got canceled. Everybody's home. I'm hiding in my studio. Yesterday it was very warm and I kept hearing terrible thumping noises from the ice coming off the roof. So I have a metal roof and it comes off in great big sheets and it kept sounding like a freaking car was going to hit the building or something. Cat hair on my page now. Get out of there. All right, so important while you're using one of these guys to constantly be wiping off those edges where you were just getting ink on them. That's why I have a paper towel. It's all smeared with ink right out of frame here so that I can keep doing that. So everything up here is still going to be wet for a little bit. And even if it looks dry, it's still pretty tacky for a little while. So I'm going to kind of just work my way down the whole page, come back to that in a little bit, to give that a chance to dry out. What do we got here? Come on. My dip is being very uncooperative today. I still really need to replace it. I've said that several times on the stream now, and I still have not replaced it yet. to get that kind of water effect just kind of rocking the nib a little bit back and forth against the straight edge. I 
I have a comment from Bryce. He says, woo. Thank you for joining me, Bryce. Anybody else who's watching, feel free to leave a comment. I do look up periodically and try to respond to them. I may not respond like immediately because I'm thinking, but I do look up every once in a while to see if anybody's leaving any comments. Ah, oh, ah, oh. I was not careful about where the tip of this was. And it, that's what I'm talking about. Dragged through that line and made a little smear. Curses. Curses. That's literally exactly what I was trying to avoid. Oh, they're different. Good to see someone else uses a perspective grid. Oh man, I use so many perspective grids. Let's see, I've got three on this page. I totally could have used a grid in this panel, but I knew I was gonna cheat and not really do a perspective correctly in it, so I didn't. Um, but yeah, most, most of my pages will have at least one perspective grid on them. <laughs> I have several pages where I'll end up having a perspective grid in like four out of five panels, depending on what the shots are for each one. Yeah, I, come on, pen, cooperate. I like making sure that my stuff is actually more or less conforming to perspective. It just ends up looking a lot better. And I know there's a lot of like modern tools and cheats and stuff to make making perspective grids easier, but you know, you can like make them on a computer and different programs and then just print them on the Bristol. But uh, it's honestly, I've got enough practice of making them by hand that it's just as fast and easy for me to just do them right on the boards. And I generally try to keep the computer out of my process for as long as possible. I do pretty much everything directly on the board up until the point that I scan it in and clean it up. That's about it. Which is why everything is in blue and red and pink so that I can pull the colors out and just leave the black. This page does not have any dialogue on it, but I, I've, I even hand lettered directly on the boards. All right, hopefully this top panel is pretty dry now. Yeah, we're doing good now. Yeah, I didn't have to mask any word balloons to <laughs> prevent spoilers for this page because there aren't any. I guess one way of looking at it would mean that the entire page is a spoiler of M since the dialogue doesn't, there is no dialogue to give anything away. So just what is happening is giving stuff away, but it's not really spoilery. Like, I think most of the time, most comic pages are so contextual that without everything that comes before and after that, the pages leading up to it and happening after it that unless it's got some character saying some really big reveal, then it's kind of hard for a single page to be too spoilery. Okay. I'm kind of holding the back end of my triangle up with my thumb because I foolishly put a line here and I need to go on the other side of it, but that way I still have that straight edge without letting it actually touch the paper. So I can't, so it won't smear that. Okay.
Oh, and there's another comment. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah, I can see how uh, if you were doing your entire workflow, the comment says that uh, now this, I'm sorry, I missed your name. Uh, Allison, Allison says that now she works entirely digitally, um, but resisted for a really long time. And yeah, I can see how if you did everything digitally, that would just, you're already there, you're already making your page there, that just makes your flow much easier. Come on, pen. And then you don't have to do this thing where you're yelling at your nib pen for not cooperating. Um, that totally makes sense, but it's the, I think it's the switching back and forth between doing some stuff on the computer and some stuff analog that just makes it feel like a bigger chore, bogs everything down. So I just don't. Partially, I just really enjoy working in physical media, but also uh, I have issues with being super photo sensitive. So staring at a computer screen, just literally like, I can't do it. <laughs> I physically can't stare at a computer screen all day. Oh, come on. My pen nib is misbehaving. I'm seriously going to go onto online and order a replacement as soon as this stream is over. This thing is making me mad. It's just gotten kind of old and gunky. Okay. I'm done with the straight edge on these bottom two panels. So we're going to switch over to a French curve now. I do use an AIMS lettering guide. I have one right here. Uh, do it right just out of frame. Yay! Beams lettering guide. And I can show you on a page that has already posted. All right, so this is a page that just posted last night. So you can see that's what the letters look like on the board. So if this were, if the page that I'm working on right now were to have letters on it, it'd already be done. So I go in and after pencils, do my lettering with my handy little Ames lettering guide. I actually have a whole video elsewhere on my channel. You can hunt around and find it. It's a little bit older at this point uh, where I go over the whole lettering process, hand lettering process, which is kind of neat if you've never had, if you've never done it before, I don't have a lot of practice or like learned how to do it once in art school and don't remember anymore. <laughs> it's a little good little refresher. For a really long time, it was like the only one on YouTube, but now somebody uh, made another one that's like super swanky and professional and has like really nice lighting and sound and everything and makes mine look really sad and amateurish, which is too bad, but <laughs> it was only a matter of time. It was going to happen eventually. All right, so anyway, after now that digression is over with. Um, oh, where can you read my stuff? That's a great question. So you can read this comic. This is Age of Night. You can read it on ageofnight.com. Um, I upload a new comic page every Wednesday. So one just uploaded last night. Uh, that would be page three, just uploaded last night. And then this is page seven. So this will be up in a few more weeks. Um, it's got a pretty deep backlog at this point, and I do have the first three volumes of it in print as well. Oh, print slash ebook, if that's the way you prefer to get big chunks of comic. There we go. So if you are not super familiar with the French curve, Basically what you do with the French curve is you just find the spot on the weird curvy shape that matches the curve that you are trying to make. And then you use it just like you would 
a triangle, a straight edge, whatever else. So sometimes you have to get for one curve, like the, the hull of this boat here. I'm not quite gonna have exactly the curve I want. That's pretty close. Yeah, that's pretty close. But sometimes you have to break it up into a couple of smaller sections and then just try to like match the seams on them. I will take every opportunity I can to explain how to use a French curve because all through art school, one thing that drove me absolutely nuts is that we were told over and over again to use a French curve when doing long curves and drawing and inking. But no professor ever actually showed me how to use a flippin' French curve. <laughs> when we would be like, when we, me and other, other, some of my classmates would be like, hey, but like show us how to use it. And they'd be like, what? No, you should know how to use it. Wait, excuse me, what? <laughs> like, that's not, this is, no, you're supposed to be teaching us things. No, you should already know how to use it. I'm not wasting class time to show you that. Like, no, 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 no. That was extremely aggravating. So I will always show people how to use a French curve because I was adamantly not shown how to use one in school and that irritates me to this day. And I graduated art school long freaking time ago now. Scoot that out just a little bit to match that curve better. There we go. Ah, yes, that's fair. Um, if you're interested in getting the ebook versions of my comic, then uh, you can get them on the big Evil Empire site. You know which one. Um, they're there. But you can also get them on Drive Through RPG and Drive Through Comics and Drive Through Fiction. Um, I make roughly the same amount of money either way, but you know. Drive through is a slight it being published on drive through is a slightly if you already have an account with one bookshelf, um, it's a slightly less evil empire to support. So, people have perfectly valid reasons for wanting to shop or not shop wherever they want to, but I try to make it available pretty much everywhere I can. All right, back up here, doing some more straight edge work. Maybe eventually I'll finish doing all of this tool stuff and be able to just like ink freehand for a little bit. That'd be nice. We'll see if I get that far on this stream. I may at some point just start doing it just because I get bored of using the tools. Which is also just, you know, if that's what it takes to get through doing what you gotta do, switch it up so you don't get bored. Whatever it takes to get through the day's work. Get some of these details on this catamaran over here. All right, back over here. Top of this building. Come on. Cooperate, dang it. Okay, there's not a lot of straight edge stuff to be down, dead and down on the bottom two tiers here. So more French curve time. Boats. Boats don't have a whole lot of straight edges. No, oh, come on. You know you want to just, just Apparently my tools want to take the snow day off too. I 
need to adjust that slightly. That's more like it. All right, way back down at the bottom here. Try to get the whole of this, or I guess, what is this called? The top. Uh, gunnels, that's what it's called. Having to like reach way back in my brain for my boat terms there. Once upon a time, I knew all of this stuff fairly well because I would go out on the lake with my dad in the canoe or the little fishing boat or whatever. And he wanted to make sure that I knew all of those terms, but that was a long time ago. Now I have to really stop and think if I have to bring them up. And I might be, I might be wrong. I'm, <laughs> I might be saying the wrong term. It's very, very possible. Let's see if I can very carefully get in here without smearing the panel next to it. So this definitely like this long curve here, I'm gonna have to do in a couple of pieces to get just so. So like, we're gonna do this first. Sorry, I keep bumping my camera with my head. I'm still in the process of setting my studio back up. Um, I made a little more progress today, but I still have a lot of work to do in here. So hopefully along, this, along with this will be a slightly better setup for streaming. That's one of the wish list items as I keep working on this. Okay, what time is it? How far are we in here? 22 minutes into the stream. Okay, not as long, haven't been doing this as long as I thought. Do a couple more curves on some boats up here. Some boats, very gentle curve there. No, don't flicker. Don't, don't flicker, Power. Don't do that. Whip that page around so I can get to what I'm trying to get to. I feel like that might actually be... Yeah, that'll get me what I want. There we go. Even though it's super upside down. No, that's, that's too close to there. I'm gonna mess that up. <laughs> I'm gonna make a mess if I try to do that. Let's not. I can probably do the other side of this boat though. Okay, getting close there on some of this tool stuff. Eh.
Aw, see how nice that looks? Nice, smooth curves on the front of that boat there. I like it. I like it. I wonder if I can work on this little corner again. Let's see if I can get that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's not exactly lining up with my drawing, but that's okay. It's okay. The line of the door did not did not cooperate. Oh, let's see. I think it's because, as it turns out, my drawing was a little bit bowed at the top. Oh, that was a lousy job. Good job, Amanda. Okay, we'll have to clean that up a little bit. Oh. Oh, thank you. That's a nice compliment. Appreciate it. Let's see, I'm gonna work on one of these panels down here while I'm waiting for stuff up top that dry. So down here, what can we do? Okay, so we can start working on this pile of rope. That's something that will actually be fun to ink. Pile of rope. Pen, like for real. Just kind of getting to that point where I'm like, yeah, I'm bored of working with the tools. I'm just going to move on. I'll loop back around to that later when my patience is restored. Piles of rope. Okay. And then I need to close that outside. Okay. You really need to stop threatening the go out there light. Right, there's some nice shading and texture on my piles of rope. Piles of rope. Mm 
Okay, and then back here, we've got stone walls. So we need to do little dots, all the little dots. All right, and then this is gonna have like a, just like a straight hatched. Texture to it, that's how, that's how these walls were already established to look in previous pages. So I gotta stick with it. So I just do a series of like guidelines to make sure that my hatching doesn't go from being like this to slowly drifting out of alignment as I go. So these little guidelines that I put down ahead of time just kind of make sure that I don't lose the direction that I'm supposed to be doing this in. As I'm doing this, I realize I haven't done a brush inking video in a little while. Maybe I'll save, I'm enough pages ahead right now that maybe I'll save this one for next week and do brush inking. Not that there's like a ton of it on here, but there's enough that I could probably fill an hour, maybe possibly. Part of the problem with the current chapter is that where it's set, there's just so much nib inking I need to do. Build that shadow up a little bit. There's that wall. Yeah, I love I love brush inking. Brush inking is probably my favorite step in all of inking. I mean, the, the nib inking is, you can get a lot of really cool effects with. That's generally what I do for most of my backgrounds. And then I do my figures in brush, which I think helps pull them forward more. Um, and then, so pretty much the only background stuff that I do with a brush is like if I have a have like a some foliage or big spot blacks or that sort of thing. For the most part, backgrounds are done with nibs for my technique. Backgrounds are done with nibs and figures are done with brush. So I do the figures after I do the backgrounds. Why? I don't know. I just do it that way. <laughs> I don't think there actually is a really good reason why. I just have always done it that way. I'm not going to try to pretend that there's a good reason for me to do that. I just do. All right. So that's some, the scrime, the lovely doc scrime on the edge of this stone walkway in a swamp. More little dots for stone texture. Yeah, it's sort of, it's a, it's my system sort of done for, um, ever really long time and it works for me all right so 
one thing we're going to do a couple little guidelines so this doesn't get wonky. Little. Clean my nib a little bit here out of frame. go. All right. And let's see, I'm probably going to give her, I'm going to kind of do an outline of where I'm going to have a little bit of a shadow around her. That'll get inked with a brush later. The rest of this gets this weird swampy texture I've been doing. So it's, you know, it's water, but it's swamp. So it doesn't look clear and clean and smooth. It looks kind of chunky and murky. dark section there. All right, there's that. <laughs> Perfect for swimming, yeah. Mm -hmm. Delicious murky water. All right, so that is gonna be for this stage of the process. That panel is gonna be done. Everything that's left on here that's not inked yet is gonna be inked in brush when I'm done doing all of this business to the rest of this page. We, because I'm crazy. Okay. There's top of that doorway on this little inset panel. I think I'm gonna work on this little little inset panel here for a bit. How are we doing on time? 40 minutes. I usually keep these to about an hour. Just because that way it's not too long. Don't want to overstay my welcome. <laughs> All right. And so more stone texture. Oh, I just remembered something else I need to do on this panel. Oh, all right, I'll do that in a second. Do that in a second. Um, all the little dots. All 
All right, so I forgot. I didn't bother penciling them in because it's just tedious, but I do need to add There's like pavers everywhere. Give that a second to, that pass a second to dry before I do the next one. Meanwhile, I'll get the scrime up on the edge of this building. I'll start doing some of this texture. Which doesn't have to be quite as dense because this is further back in the background and I don't want to overpower these figures who are supposed to be more of the focus for this panel. And there is light inside this building, but it's not like blindingly light or whatever, so we'll get a little bit of a little bit of value in there. made a superhero book set in a fantasy universe. That's pretty cool. Find that kind of a neat premise. Although genre bending is always a little bit, it's tricky. It's tricky because trying to describe to people like what it is or like if people are only interested in one side of the genre or another, it can be a little bit of a challenge, but there's a lot of really cool stories that are told that way. Okay, I'm just kind of fudging this, obviously. I don't have a grid already here, so. Okay, which kind of, sort of worked. It's a little wonky. Came out a little wonky. That's okay. Ooh. Get these little shadows under these guys. Oh, and this up in the corner up here is just going to be black. It's night. It's just darkness. More scrime. Mm, delightful. More stone texture. Guidelines, shadowy edge, 
So yeah, it gets a, a little bit repetitive. <laughs> There we go. That sideways light. Uh, dark fantasy setting. Cool. I like it. That sounds cool. All right, let's see what else. So that one also now most just pretty much pretty much all the nib stuff is done. Pretty much. Well, hang on tight. I'm looking at it again. Whew. As I try to find the best angle to approach some of this stuff from. Okay. Let's do another one down here. Before I put this French curve back down for a little bit. Clean my nib out again before I start doing some more with it. I'm gonna work on some rope again. This is the type of thing that would be much easier if I was doing this all on the computer and I could just like copy paste this background. <laughs> Seems like it would be a much more efficient way to do this type of panel, but meh. Bit of rope in the back there.
Oh, all right. Just a little bit. Oh, geez. Sorry. Sorry. Hitting the camera with my head again. I mean, it doesn't weigh anything, so it's not like it hurts me when I hit it. It's just, I know it's obnoxious that the screen shakes. All right, stone texture, what time is it? 52 minutes, okay, we're getting there. Maybe I'll finish this panel before time is up. guidelines in there again. Shadow built up. There we go. I feel like this shadow didn't blend as well as the last one, so I'm just work that edge a little bit. That's a little better. That's a little better. Less of a harsh line. It's a little more subtle. All right, we're at. 55 minutes, 30 odd seconds. So now I could start telling you about all the things. This is the time where I tell you all the things while I work for the last couple of minutes here. So in case you missed it earlier, I'm Amanda. I am working on my webcomic, Age of Night which you can read at ageofnight.com. That's A-G-E-O-F-N-I-G-H-T. So that's the time of day, not the guy in the suit of armor. Um, I upload a new comic page every Wednesday. So I just uploaded one last night. This one that I'm working on right now will be up in a few weeks since I'm somewhat <laughs> on top of things right now. Um, so yeah, you can check that out. I do these art streams about once a week, barring craziness happening. Usually it's going to be on like a Thursday or a Friday, depending on what's going on. Um, since I don't have the most predictable schedule when it comes to when I stream due to having children and 
just general household craziness. Uh, the easiest way to make sure that you don't miss any art streams is to subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell thingy so that your phone or computer or whatever you watch YouTube on will tell you when I go live. Because I'm sorry, I'm not very predictable. Um, what else? Oh yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Age of Night. You can see my artwork as well on Instagram and sometimes like my lunch or whatever when I'm baking bread. Uh, that's at Amanda Call Art. So it's just my name, as you see on the channel here, A-R-T. Um, what else am I forgetting? Uh, oh yeah, you can also, if you check out my work and you decide that you really like it and think it's cool, you can also support me on Patreon. So I'm there at Patreon dot com slash age of night just like the comic it's gonna be another big shadow there i think that's all the things um i still don't have any events coming up right now because it is the winter and i tend not to do any cons in the middle of winter because it's cold and miserable out and traveling is impossible and I just want to stay inside. So, <laughs> but spring is fast approaching and I'm going to have to start getting ready. I'm going to have to start getting ready for all the upcoming conventions. I think my first one this season is going to be at the end of April. I'll be at the Bangor Comic and Toy Con in Bangor, Maine. That's the first one. I'll be at others throughout the year. So maybe I'll come somewhere near you and you can buy artwork from me and say hi. I'm almost done with this part of this panel. I realize I didn't do the shading on that wall yet, but that's probably not going to happen before time's up here. Nope, certainly not. <laughs> certainly not. there on this water and then that's going to be it for the stream I think. So I started with just having a penciled page, no inks yet, and while it may not look like the most impressive progress after an hour because all of this straight edge and French curve tool work takes quite some time, we did get most of that done for the page. I've got backgrounds done on two, almost three, almost three panels. So that's off to a pretty good start for inking. Inking is always the longest stage of this process, for me anyway. Drawing tends to go pretty quick. I can usually pencil a page in a little over an hour. Um, but inking always takes a lot longer. So that will do it for today. Thank you everybody who came and hung out and made comments and I will see you guys all next time. Bye. <laughs>